Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to cover part two of Photoshop Actions for Real Estate Photography where we're not just taking a look at actions, you may already know how to make an action, if not there's a video right up here, this tutorial, the last one where I showed not just how to make an action but really how they apply to real estate photography to really speed along your workflow, especially using the flash ambient blend technique I talk about throughout the books and in my other videos as well. So here we're really going to take it forward. We're going to show some actions for real estate photography that are kind of like actions on steroids. In fact, it's going to be using a lot of the Adobe Camera Raw, which after I'm done with this, you may wonder, well, why am I using Lightroom to begin with? Because there's ways that you can automate things with actions in Photoshop that you might do in Lightroom during some of the post-processing steps of the real estate photography workflow. Anyways, you ready to get started and see how this is put together? Let's go. So what I'd like to do here is show two great uh, actions that should pr be providing kind of a principle overall of other things you could possibly do. So with this uh, example here that we have of this shot, this is an ambient shot. This would be our typical flash ambient blend. And by the way, if you're not familiar with that, I talk about that throughout the books. And there's a, uh, a link in the description of this video too on my real estate photography series. But anyways, we've got that ambient shot and then we've got the flash shot. And you can see the exposures. It's a little bit dark in here, but as we see on the histogram, we are just slightly right of center so we're in that comfortable range if we're using ambient along with it also then we've got a window pull so this is very typical that's that darkened mode window pull that all those uh, blown out highlights will be thrown out and you've seen uh, other videos on that as well we're going to cover that but one of the main things that happens is take this shot this ambient for instance when i mix this ambient the flash ambient blend and you may have seen this those highlights will really be overpowering these ones that are on the floor not so much here there's a little bit of a bright highlight for a hot spot up here in this window but especially the floor so sometimes what's used Useful to do, and you may have seen other photographers do this for um, their tutorials as well. Sometimes you just, you know, lower those highlights a bit, and that takes some of the glare out of that. Now that's all fine, and you can use Lightroom to do that. And of course, you're using sliders, and maybe you can use your numbers over here. You can speed that along. The other thing is when we're all done with the blending, we typically come back into Lightroom to do some of our post-processing. I'm going to show how to do all this in just a couple steps using Photoshop. So these have already had the standard geometric uh, pre-processing things applied to it like I show in videos and in the interiors book. So I'll just select all those and then we'll go ahead and edit open as layers in Photoshop. So one of the things as this loads up, you can see what I've done over here is I've put, so we have a little bit more room on the screen, I've put the actions uh, over here just right above here. And thanks to, uh, I can't remember the uh, the viewer that mentioned this, uh, he also about using button mode, but that's one thing that I don't do. Um, but I like to see here. I like to also be able to see them whether it's here or in a separate window. And that way I can then open up what those are. And you can see the ones that I typically use here. So. In here, the problem that we'd have typically, once again, is that those highlights are very bright. And you can see that, once again, the problem down here on the floor. If I were to be in Lightroom, like I said, I'd have kind of an all or nothing approach to moving that slider. But using Photoshop Actions, I can make this incremental so that I can constantly, with keystrokes, incrementally change things beyond what sliders could possibly do. Let's zoom out just a little bit now on this. Now, if you don't see your Actions window here, it might be a play button that's on your bar or go to window and actions and that will bring it up. So first thing I'd like to do is create a new action to start dimming those highlights. So what I would do is once again create the action by clicking the little action create new action icon in the actions window here. That comes up and let's go ahead and put those under the set tutorial actions. You might recall sets from the last video and then we'll call this lower highlights. Okay, so with that then I can assign a function key and for this tutorial I'll have it with F2, Shift, and Control. And you can see it's forcing me to do that because I already have F2 assigned to other Shift and Control keys. If I didn't, and let's say it was like F6, I'd have the, uh, the ability to change it here. But we're going to do it just simple. We'll start at F2 and let's go ahead and record that action. Now this is where the power really starts coming in using Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw. You go up to Filter and select 
camera raw filter. Now this brings up, you may have used this before, if not, this is a super powerful tool that it basically is Lightroom. In fact, it's using the same engine Lightroom and this camera raw filter are using ACR, Adobe Camera Raw. So in here, you've got everything imaginable. Here's your typical settings you can use. Um, inside of here, here's like your, your tone curve, uh, your detail sharpening, just about everything under here that you would find inside of Photoshop. In fact, you can even load presets that you have, excuse me, from Lightroom. What we're going to do here, though, is just go to this basic setting uh, in here. And by the way, there's other geometry stuff up here, too. You can play with, like, the transform tool and whatnot. So everything in Lightroom basically is here except for brushes. I think they did, though, apply brushes, and they do. They actually have some abrushments, adjustment brushes already in here. So excuse me on that. But anyways, what we want to do is lower the highlights. Now, typically, I would lower them way down, like here. You can see negative 85, and that's what I would do in Lightroom. But if I want to do it incrementally, let's just go ahead and knock those highlights down by about 15, right? So I've got it down to negative 15 and that's okay. So I'll just go okay and that's it. I'll just go ahead and stop that action. Now let me back up here and what we'll do on the history so we can get back here is I'm just going to go back to where we are. My history is up here. Now what I can do with this uh, action, now if I wanted to use the keys like I show here, um, like I showed in the last video, then of course I'd have to close this document, go back and we'll just hit the play button. So anyways, all I'd have to do, whether I'm using these shortcut keys or the play button down here, is I just hit it and it makes the adjustment. If I want to do it again and keep lowering it, I just keep hitting that play button as much as I want and it keeps then lowering those highlights every single time. So that's an incremental approach instead of the all or nothing. What that means is I can even go beyond the negative 100 that would have been on the slider in Lightroom. So I've been going now here, I don't know, about uh, seven times or so, eight times, and I've gone at negative 15, I've gone way beyond what that slider would have provided in Lightroom. So I can really then get some fine-tuned adjustments. So instead of just one single approach to it, I can do this incrementally with an action. So let's go back up here and start over. So I'm just backing out and I want to show the next one. So let's say that I did want to lower these highlights. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to then put this into a 50-50 blend. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, in my tutorial actions here, that lower highlights, and I'll just click it maybe once or twice, and that's going to lower those highlights. Fantastic. Okay, now I want to apply the 50-50 flash ambient blend. Now I have a... Uh, an action that does that, and you can see that up here, and that's F7. So if I press F7, that gives me that nice, even blend. Great. Now I want to do that darken mode uh, that uh, we typically do with the darken mode window pull. Just like I showed on the last tutorial, it's down at the bottom, and the action that I showed on the last tutorial, you can see is right here where I'm going to do a shift F4, and of course if I play that, then of course it goes up to the top and it puts the mask on it, and now I could use a, uh, a polygon tool around those windows and bring out my window pull with a selection. Okay, so that's basically done. There's our flash ambient blend with using mostly just actions. We were able to tone down some of the highlights. We were able to do a 50-50 blend, uh, which basically was just an action to take our ambient layer, turn it into 50% opacity, and turn it into luminosity mode. And then the darken mode action, which was take that bottom layer, move it up to the top, turn it into darken mode, and add a uh, layer mask to it so that there was less work that I had to do manually. But now what we would do is we'd have to then uh, flatten this image, save it, and then go back over to Lightroom and add some presets to it. So instead of doing that, we can make another action. Let's go to Tutorial Actions and make that. So we'll create the new action icon here. We'll call this one Flatten and Bump. And we'll save this to, let's say, F3 with Shift and Control. So let's record that. The first thing we would do is flatten our image. So we go to Layer, and then Flatten Image. Now, just like we did in the first action, we're going to bring up Adobe Camera Raw. So we go to Filter, and then Camera Raw Filter. Now let's apply kind of like the light bump. Let's go with a, uh, a contrast of 10. This, by the way, you've seen this preset in my other books and in the other uh, videos. I'm going to make it uh, on the highlights. I'll just drop it by about 60. That way it's not quite as severe. Shadows will bring up to 50. 
And then the whites, let's bring that up to about, let's say 30. And then the blacks, we'll just drop that just a little bit down to about 20 and then up the clarity by about 10, okay? Then we just say, okay, there we've got that and let's stop that action, okay? Now let's see how this would have played out. Let's go back up here before we flatten the image. This is where we were. If I were to now take that flatten and bump uh, action and play it, it flattens the image, it applies the Adobe Camera Raw stuff to it, basically the light bump, and now I can save it. Now as I save it, and once it goes back into Lightroom, if I needed to make some slight adjustments, I could maybe up the whites even a little bit, maybe up the highlights a little bit, whatever I wanted to do, but I don't have to do the full preset. In fact, most of the times that would take care of it for me. So you can see a couple advantages here of using actions over just Lightroom. For instance, if you really had an aversion to Lightroom, you wanted to use Bridge or something else or not use anything like that, you could use Photoshop for just about everything because Adobe Camera Raw is there. I still like to use Lightroom for a lot of the pre-processing and the post-processing too. When I'm working on small rooms, bedrooms, bathrooms, stuff that don't really matter, simple window pulls, this stuff comes in pretty handy. It can really speed things along. So a couple things. One, you can do these type of actions incrementally. So for instance, the highlight one, if it's you're finding that you're constantly lowering highlights or you're constantly dealing with a, a slight underexposure, overexposure, things like that with whatever camera you're using, you can take care of that by not just a preset in Lightroom, but you can also then start adjusting those incrementally uh, then in Photoshop with an action. That's a very simple case though. The more complex case that then gets us a lot of variability is to be able to use Adobe Camera Raw at some portion of that action. So for instance, at the very end of the Flash Ambient Blend where we'd flatten everything, and then we'd normally save it, go to Lightroom, don't save it yet, just go ahead and in that action that would flatten it, and then bring up Adobe Camera Raw and put in all of those light bump or other type bump uh, settings to it. And then you, after that, you can save it, make other adjustments or whatever you need to do. Anyways, Photoshop Actions can definitely speed things along and I really hope that this and the last tutorial was also useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this tutorial, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.